Hi, yeah, this is your essay video. So I'm going to do a breakdown of a couple of different characters and themes over the next couple of videos. But this one is a general idea of how to mark, how to answer an essay and also the kind of things the examiners are going to be looking for. OK, so this isn't specific to each character. Those will be the next videos. But for now, this is going to be expressing how to write a good essay. Right, so the majority of you should have been given a PowerPoint called Of Mice and Men Revision Session. And this is the PowerPoint that I put together uh, when we were doing the half-term uh, revision sessions. If you didn't have access to it, don't hesitate about sending me an email and I will make sure that you have it, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen now and we're gonna go over the general idea of how you answer an essay question in the Of Mice and Men exam. Now, technically, you're going to have two essays. You're going to have one of my Semen essay and one poetry essay. Poetry we're forgetting about for now because that's going to be a separate video. But the of my Semen essay is always the same kind of thing. The strategies that you use in this video, that's going to be the strategy that you use in the exam. OK, so just to share, this is the uh, the PowerPoint that I sent out when you're writing an essay. The essay will either be related to a theme or a character you will be given a choice. So you'll have your extract question, which is compulsory, and then you'll have either one of the essay questions that you can choose to answer. Usually it's one theme, one character. Traditionally, theme essays tend to be a bit easier because you're able to apply a lot more context, which is your AO4, into those essays. AO1 is uh, knowledge of the text and you should be able to get a lot in any way using your quotations and making sure you have a, a lot of knowledge inserted into it. But the major component of the essay section is context, understanding the 1930s and how it applies to characters and themes. OK, so if we look at this uh, method page, it says here a full essay plan includes an introduction, three to four characters slash themes related to the question. If your essay is on characters, you'll split it into themes. And if the question is on themes, you will split it into characters. So, for example, if your essay was on crooks, you might cover the themes of prejudice, loneliness, dreams, um, failures, those kinds of things. OK, and that would be your essay. But if, if your essay was on dreams, you might split it into George and Lenny, Curly's wife, Crooks, Candy, and so on and so forth. So they would be split into characters. So hopefully you get that. Now, then you would finish off with a conclusion. The majority of the conclusions that I've seen in the exam and exemplar that we've shown you have been relatively short, but a lot of them have included the ideas of why you think Steinbeck included this theme or included this character, what he was trying to say about it. It's a nice way to round off your conclusion. Whereas your introduction is going to come from your planning stage, and I'll explain that now. Okay. So um, if we have a look at what goes into a good paragraph, you would do this three or four times in your essay to make up the filling. And this method is called the burger method. So you've got your burger, your fancy little burger on the side here. You've got knowledge, which is AO1, or AO exclamation mark, I prefer. <laughs> uh, next one is AO4, which is your context. And then it's AO1 again, because you need to make sure you've got all of that knowledge in. AO1 means using quotations and showing you understand that character, okay? You're going to aim to get around about five to six quotes per paragraph, okay? Those might be woven in the, uh, the AO1 sections, which is the one and the one here, or you could fit them in the AO4 section if the bit of context you're talking about is shown through a quotation. So as an example, we've got the Curly's wife example here. So if our essay was on Curly's wife and dreams, this might be a paragraph that we use. In the novel, Curly's wife has a dream to become a Hollywood movie star by being in the pictures. She does this specifically because she is isolated and wants attention. In the 1930s, it was the golden age of Hollywood, which means it was popular and offered people an escape from their terrible and desperate lives. Women who were often mistreated sometimes aspired to be movie stars and gain the attention they craved. Just like Curly's wife, many women suffered mistreatment at the hands of their husbands. This means that her dream only offered her false hope like many other women back then. She gets awful lonely, demonstrating that she never gains attention until after her death at the hands of Lenny. Now, this isn't a 
full paragraph example, mainly because there's only two quotes in there. And the reason there are only two quotes in there is to demonstrate how you do something called embedding quotations. What I mean by embedding quotations is rather than saying something really silly like the quote pictures demonstrates that, that's key stage three, even like year six talk. You're in year 10 and 11 now. You need to make sure that you are actually applying your quotations as part of your sentence. So notice how I've done it at the start. Curly's wife has a dream to become a Hollywood movie star by being in the pictures. I've made that quotation part of my sentence, which means I've not stopped my flow. The examiner doesn't have to take a break out to see that I've written the quote, which is wrong, by the way. I've included it as part of my sentence, which makes it seem more sophisticated and more academic. The same as back here. She gets awful lonely, demonstrating that she never gains attention. That's me embedding my quotations. And like I said, you're looking for about five to six quotations if you can. And if you can't remember quotations or you're struggling to remember the exact wording, that doesn't matter. If you're really stressing about the exact wording, start your quotation as normal, but put it in square brackets, which shows it's paraphrased. You're not really sure what the quote was, but this is roughly what, it, what they said in the book. The examiner will usually no, notice that and usually mark it, okay? So like I said, five to six quotations, but the main chunk of your paragraphs is going to be this context, AO4 context. Your AO1 is worth 33% of your mark on the essay question, whereas AO4 is worth 67%, quite literally double the marks. So you need to be very focused on explaining as much history as you possibly can in your essay that links to the question. So as an example here, if we were going to talk about Lenny next and his dream, I might open with some of the ways he's presented in the text without forgetting quotes, and I would be very, very specific. So if it was Lenny's dream, we know that he he wants to live off the fat of the land, we know he wants the rabbits, and we know that he wants to do it with George. We were always going to do it together. And he says things like, but not us, George. We're different, you know? Lenny shows his dream through what he says and what he act, what he wants to do. His dream is very naive because he is very childish. He wants to pet rabbits and look after them. Um, so that's something you can mention. And even in the first paragraph alone, those couple of words, live off the fat of the land, the rabbits, we was going to do it together. That would be three good quotes. Even if Lenny doesn't say them, if George says live off the fat of the land, that is still their combined dream, which means you could mention it. Then you come into context. So what context could we link to, to Lenny and his dream? So first of all, we think about migrant workers because migrant workers, all uh, the majority of them had dreams to aspire to something more. They wanted more out of their life than just going between different things. But why did they have to go between different dreams and ideas? Because of the Great Depression. So we've mentioned the Great Depression. Lenny would have an extra layer on top of achieving that dream though, because he's mentally disabled. It'd be very difficult for someone who's mentally disabled to achieve their dreams in the 1930s. So now we have got three different contexts that we can include to talk about Lenny's dream and why it might have been impossible for him to ever achieve his dream. And then we would finish off with a bit of knowledge about the character. We'd maybe talk about the idea that he's done a bad thing, which shows the end of his dream, that because he kills Curly's wife, he can never hope to achieve that dream. And he can never hope to understand it either because he just calls it a bad thing. He's murdered someone. So therefore, we have now included at least five to six quotations and three areas of context in one paragraph. So what would that look like then? Right, so if I take my uh, plan just here and I open up a docs and copy and paste that plan in for Lenny. So we're going to then Try and construct that paragraph like I mentioned earlier. So let's get up a blank document if we can hopefully get it going. Very slow today. So I would copy and paste my plan here. So I know what I need to talk about when it comes to Lenny, which is some of these ideas. And we've already mentioned what we could talk about. So let's construct it together. In terms of Lenny's, of Lenny's dream, we know he shares the idea of living off the fatter the lamb.
with George. They aspire to be more. They aspire to be more than um, simple migrant than simple migrant workers. With Lenny's childish fantasies of looking after the rabbits and feeding them alfalfa. Right, straight away, I have got one quote. I misspelled Lenny because I didn't put a capital letter in. Terrible. Child friends have to look after the rabbits. Again, another quotation. And feeding them alfalfa. Another quotation. This proves to the examiner, one, I know Lenny's dream. Two, I know it's linked to George. And three, I've got three quotations to demonstrate I understand that dream. Crack in AO1, okay? I've already got the basis for my essay. Now we need to link that to the 1930s. And what could we say about Lenny in the 1930s? Very simply, we would start off with, in the 1930s, you would start it very differently each time if you can. So if you used in the 1930s earlier, don't use it again. Try something else, such as in the Great Depression. In the 1930s, many migrant workers held dreams to aspire to as they suffered a great deal moving from place to place. By wanting to own a little place, Lenny proves that migrant workers just wanted to remain in one place and make a life for themselves, right? Lovely bit of context. And not only that, I've said many migrant workers. If you said all migrant workers, that would be wrong because we don't know that. But we can say many migrant workers because a lot of them did have dreams. Held dreams to aspire. They suffered a great deal from moving place to place. But I want to own a little place. Look, I've squeezed another quotation in there. Cracking. Four now. Lenny proves that migrant workers just wanted to remain in one place and make a life for themselves. Lenny's dream is quite juvenile. But that links to his mental disability. Back then, the mentally disabled, mentally, mentally disabled would have been treated differently to others and frowned upon and were frowned upon by able-minded people. This kind of attitude towards the disabled would have made it extremely difficult to um, own a home and work a ranch. which is why George explains he was kicked in the head by a horse rather than admitting his difficulties. Right? So, all this is related to the dream. This is my first part which is related to migrant workers this next part is related to disability and i've managed to squeeze yet another quotation in about george talking about lenny now i need to round it back and the question from before was um how does lenny as uh, represent aspects of 1930s society so in this case, if I'm talking about dreams, I might finish off by saying um, Lenny represents the failure um, of a dream due to the difficulties he, face, he faces.
And that means then I am linking it back to the question. Lenny represents the failure of a dream due to the difficulties he faces. In a 1930s context, he would never have achieved his dream He would have never achieved his dream, which is signified by his death at George's, his death by George's hand in chapter six. Right. So therefore, I have linked a great deal of AO1 and AO4 together to construct a very good paragraph. In terms of Lenny's dream, we know he shares the idea of living off the fat of the land with George. They aspire to be more than simple migrant workers with Lenny's childish fantasies of looking after the rabbits and feeding them alfalfa. In the 1930s, many migrant workers held dreams to aspire to as they suffered a great deal moving from place to place. By wanting to own a little place, Lenny proves that migrant workers just wanted to remain in one place and make a life for themselves. Lenny's dream is quite juvenile, but that links to his mental disability. Back then, the mentally disabled would have been treated differently to others and were frowned upon by able-minded people. This kind of attitude towards the disabled would have made it extremely difficult to own a home and work a ranch, which is why George explained he was kicked in the head by a horse rather than admitting his difficulties. Lenny represents the failure of a dream due to the difficulties he faces. In the 1930s context, he never would have achieved his dream, which is signified by his death at George, uh, by his death by George's hand in chapter six. Now you might word that slightly differently. Remember, I'm doing this on the fly. I'm not. I've not got a script or anything. Meaning some of it might be worded differently to how you would word it, or you might change a few things around or modify and add more quotes in. But this is the basic gist of it. And linking back to the idea of a burger, so we'll highlight these in that burger bun sort of method. So if I make the bun yellow, pretty grim, and then I go for the context down here, which I would make um, orange, and then I've got my AO1 again at the end, there are little indispersed bits of AO1 throughout because I'm using my quotations all the way through. These all link to Lenny, but this also links to the question. I'm answering it very well. So I will be going over specific essay plans for different characters in the next couple of videos. But that should give you a general idea of how to construct a good essay and how to construct a good paragraphs. I will be doing a video on introductions and conclusions as well on how to construct them in the next couple of videos. So stay tuned for that and thanks for listening.